July has just begun. The birthday of Burgerland will soon be celebrated all across this great nation with booze, hot dogs, and explosives. Most people would describe this week as peak summertime. But if you're responsible for securing computer systems, then chances are you already got the email telling you not to sign off for the week until you've confirmed that all of the company's systems are secured against yet another critical open SSH vulnerability that affects pretty much all Linux systems connected to the internet. This vulnerability is tracked as CVE 2024-6387, and it's already got a cute nickname, so you know this is a really serious bug. People have been calling it regression because the current vulnerability is very similar to a bug in OpenSSH that was patched back around 2006. So at some point, there was a change made to the OpenSSH code base that brought this bug back with a vengeance. <laughs> the bugs are back. The core of the issue is a signal handler race condition in the SSH daemon, where if a client is connecting to an OpenSSH server and they don't authenticate within the time defined by the login grace time variable, which is usually two minutes, then SSHD's SIG alarm handler gets called asynchronously, which calls other functions asynchronously, like syslog, that are not async signal safe. This race condition affects the SSH daemon in its default configuration, which is part of the reason why this bug has such a high severity. And it's estimated that over 14 million internet-facing servers are still vulnerable. Now, if we take a look at the original bug back from 2006, we can see that its description is very similar to the current CVE, Signal Handler Race Condition in OpenSSH before version 4.4 allows remote attackers to cause a denial of service or crash on the system and possibly execute arbitrary code if GSSAPI authentication is enabled, which allows you to authenticate via Kerberos. Now, I'm not sure if that Kerberos authentication was enabled by default in OpenSSH version 4.4. My guess is no, which means that the original vulnerability is more of a denial of service bug rather than a remote code execution one. Now that's still very serious, especially in something like a large enterprise network where a few minutes of downtime could equate to millions of dollars in lost revenue, but it's not the absolute worst thing that a hacker can do to your system, deny you or your clients access to it. The latest regression bug, on the other hand, steps things up a notch because remote code execution is possible with the default OpenSSH configs. And based on experiments that have been done by security researchers to explore the extent of this exploit's seriousness, it's possible to obtain a remote root shell on a vulnerable system in as little as a few hours, at least on 32-bit systems, and closer to six to eight hours on average for 32-bit systems with ASLR, which makes it harder to exploit these kinds of race conditions successfully. Now, I know some people will hear this and think that this bug must be a big nothing burger then because nobody out there is using 32-bit systems, especially not servers that are connected to the internet. They're all gonna be 64-bit and most likely using ASLR, which would probably take this exploit closer to a week to be successful on those systems. But considering that a remote root shell is the holy grail of hacks, I think it's likely enough that profit-driven hackers that are targeting corporation, banks, and other entities like that would take the time to exploit it, especially if the attack can be automated. And who's to say that the process can't have improvements made? You know, the exploitation process can't have improvements made to it that allows attackers to get a remote root shell even quicker. Now let's talk about mitigations for this very serious bug. Luckily, for most of you out there, the issue can simply be fixed by updating OpenSSH. 
The security researchers that discovered this bug responsibly disclosed it to the OpenSSH developers and the maintainers of various Linux distributions through OpenWall several weeks ago. So if you have automatic security updates configured on your server, like you should, then there's a good chance that a patched version was already applied before the hungry script kitties could get word of this bug. Now I'm sure that there's some systems out there that for whatever reason can't be updated and can't have the open SSH daemon down even for a minute to apply patches to the software manually and then recompile it. So if that's the case, you could mitigate the major remote code execution bug by simply setting the login grace time variable to zero in your open SSH configuration file. Now, one detail that I think is very interesting about this root RCE vulnerability is that despite it being caused by a bug in OpenSSH, OpenBSD, which is maintained by the same developers as OpenSSH, is not vulnerable to the bug because its SIG alarm calls the syslogr function which is a reentrant version of syslog that the OpenBSD team came up with, which is safe against these kinds of race conditions caused by asynchronous signals. FreeBSD, on the other hand, is vulnerable. So this is the security advisory that they posted today. Highly recommend that you update your free BSD systems as well. I know that they're gaining a lot of popularity for server use due to better performance and better security with certain applications than a lot of Linux distributions have that have traditionally been used for servers. Netflix, for example, they famously use free BSD in their content delivery network. Now, speaking of Linux server distros, Alpine Linux is also not vulnerable to this bug. A lot of people have been wondering that and it's been confirmed on Fostodon a few hours ago. Alpine is not vulnerable because its muscle is too strong for this race condition. Although the bug does still cause some undefined behavior. I've also seen some people wondering whether or not Rust would have prevented this whole fiasco since ultimately race conditions are a kind of memory issue and Rust is supposed to be memory safe, right? The answer is possibly, but it's probably not just as simple as using an SSH daemon that's written in Rust, because first of all, OpenSSH is one of the most proven pieces of software in existence. So don't throw the BSD baby out with the bathwater. But also, the bug clearly isn't just a flaw in OpenSSH, Unsafe syslog implementations play a role as well, which is why distros like OpenBSD and Alpine Linux are immune to this bug despite using vulnerable versions of OpenSSH. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store based.win where you can get awesome merch like the Little Damon t-shirt and accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% discount store-wide when paying in Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.